Good afternoon to you, Mark Suttoth, HurricaneTrack.com, here with your Hurricane Pro and HD video blog for Wednesday, the 23rd of September, 2015. So what has been going on with this hurricane season besides this El Nino that's been in the Pacific for quite some time? I've had a lot of warm water in the Atlantic Basin, that's for sure. Anything you see in the yellow and oranges and even some reds are temperatures of the ocean's surface that are above the long-term climatological average, which is on the right-hand side of the scale here. And anything in the blue shading makes sense that it would be below the long-term average. So we've had all this warm water, uh, even down here in the main development region, Western Atlantic Basin, plenty of warm water abound, but not much activity, only a couple of hurricanes, fairly short-lived at that. So what's the reason? Well. The upper level winds have been very strong this year, and you can see that in the uh, September anomaly chart here. This is a great product to show the departure from normal in the upper parts of the atmosphere. And here, anything on the right hand side of the scale is anomalous wind speed at 200 millibars, or way up at what we call the outflow level. And we're talking meters per second faster than the climatological norm. And the other way to look at it anything in this white coloring and then in the blue would be normal to below normal wind shear in the atmosphere or what we call the 200 millibar zonal wind and that's important because when you have upper level winds that are screaming across uh, from west to east like this then you have tropical waves or even storms or hurricanes moving against that they become sheared off or decapitated and so we've had this sort of cyclonic flow, this upper level trough carved out with very strong winds in the upper levels of the atmosphere and that has really kept a lid on things only out here in the deep tropics and even at that in a limited area have we had winds that have allowed for anything to develop. Of course we had Bill that came in here to uh, the Texas coastline back in June but everywhere else all this green and yellow that you see here are upper level winds that have been unfavorable also, because of this sinking motion in the atmosphere over the Atlantic Basin, not necessarily dry air coming off Africa and what we call the Saharan air layer outbreaks, not so much that as just sinking air. The air has been rising over the Pacific off the chart here and sinking over the Atlantic in a cyclonic flow aloft, not conducive for development. And so the 500 millibar, or around the 18,000 foot mark in the atmosphere, about midway up, has been very dry in these yellows and reds. But right off of Africa, again, in a fairly limited area, the moisture content in the atmosphere, in this case, uh, the right-hand side of the scale, is favorable for development. And so this has been more moist than we would normally see, as has been the case uh, throughout the western Atlantic and parts of the Gulf but the development that we have seen has been uh, very limited and uh, that's just been this, the nature of the hurricane season so despite the warm water relative to average in the Atlantic upper level wind shear and the lack of moisture in the middle parts of the atmosphere especially in the western parts of the basin and across the Caribbean just hasn't been where it needs to be to see development and that has spelled for the most part good news for just about everybody except Dominica which unfortunately had a lot of rainfall for that small Caribbean island uh, tropical storm Erica was the one for this year several deaths unfortunately and devastating flash floods in that mountainous island in the Caribbean it just shows you that sometimes it really does only take one I know it's cliche but for that area in the Caribbean, it was a devastating season for them. So what's going on out there today in the Atlantic Basin? Not a whole lot. Here's Ida. And look, this is right in that area where the strong upper level winds have been just carving through. And you can see the clouds being stretched out like cotton candy being pulled apart. Not very conducive for development of this system at all. But, you know, it's hung on and it's trying to maintain itself. And if it can just kind of get up here outside of that area of strong upper level winds then it might try to intensify some this is an upper level low pressure area not to be concerned with at all and then we have this coastal trough sitting off the Carolinas 
and then some energy trying to get together over parts of the Western Caribbean and Southern Gulf of Mexico over the next few days. So let's take a look at that. In the western part of the Atlantic Basin, we have this coastal trough, this little focusing mechanism here off the coast of the Carolinas, weak little areas of low pressure forming along this trough, and then you have very strong high pressure to the north over New England and parts of Canada, and that squeeze play between the two is driving some pretty strong winds, 25, 30 knots or so, over a large area of the ocean, several hundred miles, we call that a fetch, and that is ending up sort of pointed right at the tidewater of Virginia and into parts of the North Carolina Outer Banks where each high tide that has been coming in during this period of uh, this fetch that's been established for so many days now, we're starting to see some coastal erosion, beach erosion problems, and even some ocean overwash at those times of high tide. Now, you can see this also on the 850 millibar level, or about 5,000 feet in the atmosphere. Coastal trough carved out in here, little areas of energy along that trough, adding to you know, some offshore showers and the occasional thunderstorm. Some of this is going to probably try to move on shore here in the Carolinas and into Virginia over the weekend, and there could be some pretty excessive rain amounts. This is the GFS. Uh, five days, no, what is this, six days out. I wanted to show you, there's going to be a lot of talk about this Gulf system uh, that hasn't even developed yet. I mean, we can go back to the satellite picture. Uh, there's really nothing in and around the Yucatan now. Uh, low pressure is expected to develop in the broad sense of the word over this region. And then by day six, you see it here, 1,003 millibars, yeah, 20 mile per hour winds, pretty heavy rain on the east side. But check this out, it's comma-shaped, the precipitation shield with this comma-shaped. It's not wrapped around the west side. It's not a, a ball, you know, like you've seen. You know, think about Hurricane Katrina when it came through here and then turned in and hit. You know, it was a very well-organized ball of convection. Uh, this is not, and uh, it's sheared, lopsided. You know, you could still have some minor coastal flooding along the Mississippi Sound and some of your low-lying areas where even the slightest 20 mile, 30 mile per hour onshore flow for a day or so can pile up the water, but it's not going to amount to much, it looks like, because a very sharp upper level trough carved out here with strong southerly flow going over the top of that low pressure area, which would presumably be right in here somewhere. I'll draw the L in, and then on top of that you have the winds coming across the uh, low pressure area blowing the showers and thunderstorms away from the center not conducive at all for development and so whatever comes out of this will probably be just a rainmaker which could be heavy at times not to discount that entirely but this is not going to be the season ending big hurricane that some people have been kind of talking about maybe would happen because of all the warm water in the western Atlantic Basin and then the Gulf the pattern has not been conducive for development. I showed you that with the uh, wind shear chart here and the moisture. Yeah, well, the moisture has been you know, fairly ample, but you just can't change this very quickly. The status quo is the status quo for a reason. We're kind of locked into that pattern, and thus I don't think we're going to see anything too significant coming out of this potential Gulf system. You never say never but the odds are that it won't be very strong. All right? Well, there you go. You're up to date for what's going on in the tropics. I'll have more for you towards the end of the week, and we'll see what develops out there. Uh, but really not much going on here as we end the month of September. Again, I am Mark Suttoth for HurricaneTrack.com and, of course, Hurricane Pro and HD. I'll have another video blog for you on Friday.